What was the amount of views on that tweet? I mean, we did over 500 million views last year. 500 yeah. million Organ views organically, organically without, without a dollar spending a dollar. Spend. Yeah. 500 million views. That is that is absolutely insane. Yeah. So how do you go from zero to doing over a million dollars per month? Today's episode is with Oliver Brocata, the founder of Tabs Chocolate. And well, that's exactly what he did using TikTok to scale. You guys see every five to seven years, new opportunities present themselves where intelligent marketers can find a level of scale without bringing on any outside debt, without spending a bunch of money and actually create a real eight or nine figure enterprise. You see, guys, for me, that was Amazon back in the day. As a matter of fact, I'm actually recording this intro from one of my good friends' penthouses. And he recently just exited his business for $610 million. My point with all of that is anything is possible in this digital world, but it's about finding an edge, finding what is working today, what is working now. And so this channel is committed to finding that for you. So you're gonna wanna sit back, take out a pen and paper, write down every single note you can because Oliver was kind enough to give the game, the sauce, what is working right now. So again, let's tap in. YouTube, welcome back. It is with so, great pleasure today that I get to welcome Oliver, who sells sex chocolate on the internet. It's true. Founder of Tabs. Oliver, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today and, and linking up with me, man. I think your story, it's one that like inspires me. I love the, the next evolution of e-commerce brand building. And so for you to be able to share this story with my audience and all that good stuff, it's a, it's an honor. So thank you. Yo, thank you for having me on. And it's great to meet you, dude. Yeah, thank you. So so just, I guess, very, very top of the funnel here, so to speak. Can you walk us through the, the birth and evolution of Tabs? Absolutely. Before I kind of talk a little bit about Tabs, I think it's important that you understand me and you understand my story because, you know, sex chocolate is pretty f***ing wild. Sorry, rather, it's... Sex chocolate is pretty wild, and it's a bit of a foreign concept. And it's kind of like, okay, how did you, how did you get there? How did you, how did I even start there? Uh, this this year, we're gonna do over ten million dollars in sales. But before I get into that, I kind of want to give a little bit of background. I've been in the I've been in the e-commerce space since I was fourteen years old. I uh, started off with fidget spinners. I started a social media marketing agency. I tried drop shipping. I had like eighteen different ventures. Uh, by the time I was seventeen, I discovered the world of TikTok. I brought an app to number four on the social networking charts, right behind Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. And then I was one of the people responsible for the viral TikTok leggings, the ones that girls, that, the ones that made ass look fat, uh, you know, on TikTok. And so I, have a lot, I had a lot of experience in e-com, I had a lot of experience in viral marketing. And what happened was with the TikTok leggings was that everybody and their mother copied us. And the market quickly got saturated and we got screwed by, the, by competition. We got undercut and it was just too competitive. And so after that fiasco, we went to the drawing board and we were like, listen, we know how to go viral. We know how to blow things up. What, what, what year was this? What year was this? This was two and a half years ago. Okay. Yes, I was, uh, I was a freshman in college at the time studying business at the University of Michigan. And I wanted, to, I wanted to find a product that lent itself to going viral. A lot of people start with a product and brand and try to market it. I knew how to market it. I wanted to reverse engineer that. And so for me, like that was the genesis of Tabs. Was like, how can I find something that will that is intrinsically viral, that will cut through the noise, that 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 that, that, that can that can be you know described on video in three seconds, and, and and something that I wouldn't have to like push very hard. And basically, my partner uh, saw a video on TikTok one day, had eight million views, two million likes, and it was a sex chocolate. And he sent it to me and he's like, yo, this is a really interesting product. I go to do research on it and they have no social media presence. They're not being sold online. You know, they're in a couple of regional sex stores. Their branding and packaging sucks. And I have this holy shit moment that like, I know for a fact I can blow this up and I could take this from zero to a hundred. So, so it, it was a, it was a, like a creator's post that went viral. It had nothing to do with the brand itself. Dude, not even a creator's post. It was some random chick who bought it at some regional sex shop, made a TikTok about it. She maybe had like 400 followers, if that. And it, somehow it just caught. And to me, that's what validated the whole entire product and brand, Good right? Fine. Like I didn't reinvent the wheel. I'm not like some like mastermind that like, in, like came up with a formulation and you know, like I took something, I saw something that worked, 
that had incredibly poor execution and I leveraged my skill set and background to take it to the moon. With that being said, like I did focus very, very heavily on improving the product. You know, we- Oh, you made a killer brand. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, we spent a year in the trenches working with food scientists and chocolatiers and, and, and design experts in order to really craft an incredible customer experience. But I'm saying like the idea was seeded by competition. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so with all that, the f Willy Wonka of sex chocolate was born. That's awesome. I'll take it. I like that title. All right, so understand this. Oliver went through all the things, right? Social media marketing agency, drop shipping, all the e-commerce, like social media web. And then he realized, or more importantly, I hope the viewer realizes that real wealth comes from finding an edge. And every five to seven years, it seems like a new edge exists where you can go from zero to seven, eight, nine figures, right? For me, it was Amazon. You could literally start and scale. Today, it's obviously TikTok. But the differentiator here and what I think makes Oliver so special is that a lot of motherfuckers fall into these worlds, okay? There's a lot of people who can do the butt lift pants or whatever on TikTok. But it's those who realize the full opportunity and say, I can create a real brand with this. And they take the time, they go through all the details. Like that's what I did with Genius. There was a lot of crap making money on Amazon. But who is gonna make the real brand equity plays where you invest in you know, the fonts, the product quality, all the things that really matter and ultimately create real life changing wealth. So tap in, Oliver's about to go more into detail on this. It's just gold. So so, so you had your first idea ripped off. Do you mind me asking how big that was? The, the leggings that made the, they made your butt look bigger or whatever? Yeah, we did about like 1.2 million 1 .2, in our first year. And then the competitors flood in. And it was just a sinking ship. And there's no moat. No moat. So, so on tabs, like inherently there's not, I guess making a chocolate is much harder. Yes. But how much did you say from the beginning that I'm going to invest in brand? I mean, your packaging, the story, the like, the whole concept is super on point. Mm -hmm. So how intentional was that from the beginning? And how do you think about building an actual brand? Good question. Every single little decision, like in terms of the packaging, the shade of gold, the font, everything was incredibly intentional. And there was like a lot of conscious thought and debate and, you know, arguments for, for every single minute detail. You know, for example, the way that the way that our product works is there are a box of chocolates. There are only three squares of chocolates and we sell it for $29.99. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty crazy. It's three tiny 20 gram pieces of chocolate. And so in order to, to convince somebody- My fucking type of business, bro. Yeah, good margins, that. good margins for sure. But you know, in order to convince somebody to, to, to shell that kind of money, like you need to, kill, to create and, and foster a killer brand experience. And so we went the extra mile, sparing no expense and, and really like agonizing over every single part. So for example, each chocolate square breaks in half. And that was like very important. That was key because we were able to describe the product without any words on a two second flash in, in a video. Like, like through images, we were able to show how the product works, right? Mm -hmm. And so like that was very important. Or for example, like, you know, we have our logo on the chocolate, like, like, like uh, you know, the teas. That doesn't happen by accident. We had to create custom virgin polycarbonate, you know, molds in order to facilitate that. That took months of R&D and back and forth. You know, for example, the, the shade of gold, we spent months debating and arguing over like 80 different shades. And these, 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 these small things seem crazy. They seem very tiny, the but at the end of the day, compounded, you know, like over and over and over again, all of a sudden, like you end up with a vastly different customer experience and ultimately trajectory for the business. How long did it take you to get to the actual like day one launch from when you, you had the idea, you know, all the, all the trench warfare, all right. the branding, all the R&D, right. how long did that take? 11 months. 11 months. 11 months. Damn. What I will say though, is that like, it wasn't like 11 months of like grinding my face off, right? Like there were a lot, there was a lot of waiting yeah. because like you couldn't, we couldn't start photography until we had the boxes. We couldn't start the boxes until we had the design and things take a long time. Like a lot of things, like, like it, it wasn't like you bang, 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 right? It was like, wait for one project to be done. And you know, then it's in somebody else's hands. And then once that's done, we can move on to the next and the next and the next. So like, you know, there was a lot of time where we were kind of sitting on our hands. Yeah. But, you know, with that being said, there was a lot of um, effort and there was a lot of work that went into what you see. And I think that that has become, you know, our competitive advantage. That has become our moat. Unlike the leggings, if you want to compete with me, you have to invest 11 months or more. You're going to have to invest tens of thousands of dollars. It's and just not doable. It's not you're, doable. You're not like, gonna, yeah. The reality is that like the people that are ripping you off, they're chasing the quick buck. They don't have the patience or the ability to like kind of withstand and, and go that extra mile to, to, in order to compete with us. And so by doing so, we're able to like eliminate like 99% of the competition. But so, so that, that 11 month sweat equity investment, the right. time you put in 
what did that ultimately yield? And th this is that, that tweet we were talking about. This might be the start of the video. So, so say it animated, okay. but how many views like in, in terms of in, with zero ad spend? Yeah. Zero dollars in ad spend. You know, so in our, in our first, in our first three weeks, we sold out of all of our inventory. Okay. We, like we, I, we invested $30,000 total, you know, to start the whole entire company on uh, the formulation, the boxes, you know, our initial round of inventory, everything, site design, web design, developers, you know, we bootstrapped every single part of this and made every single penny stretch. Okay. Our first three weeks, we did over a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. And, and, and then, and then we moved to pre-order. I would say like three and a half weeks in, uh, a creator, an influencer posted about us. It got over 8 million views, 2 million likes, and we did $50,000 in revenue that day. That and, day. And, and, and in pre-orders, in pre-orders too. All of these people were fronting their money for us, you know, to then like buy more inventory. Bunch of horny mother It was insane. Like it was insanity. And like from that point on, like I knew that we had a winner. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, you doing a million, you, have you broken a million a month yet? You're right so with us. not quite. We're on the cusp. Last month, we did about $850,000. Uh, this month, we did have to scale down a little bit because of inventory constraints. Uh, we're gonna, probably going to end at around eight hundred. dollars Next month, we're going to push 1.2 to 1.5. When your biggest problem is staying in stock, you've got a amazing business. It's uh, still stressful, man. <laughs> it's still, no, I, I agree, and it, it's an amazing problem to have. But man, oh man, the supply chain is tough, right? Because they're like 20 moving parts. And if we fall behind on one thing, the whole entire supply chain stops. The yeah. whole entire business pauses. And so, you know, it's important that we're not like missing any detail. So, so I, I view you, I've spent a lot of time, you know, I'm a, I'm an older guy now, but I've spent a lot of time uh, on the short form scene, studying this content, obviously the Tate model, right. I did a whole Tate model video with, with Jake Tran. Oh, nice. Um, I view you as a true TikTok genius or short form genius. Can you talk through your actual strategy? Obviously, you you came up with the product. It's a walking viral right. layup. Right, it but, is. But there's there's some true magic in that to leverage. What Absolutely. Did, what was the amount of views on that tweet? I mean, we did over 500 million views last year. 500 yeah. million organically views organically, organically without, without a spending dollar a dollar. Spend. Yeah. 500 million views. That is that is absolutely insane. Yeah. Oh my f YouTube, this is the sauce, all right? Like, this is the stuff the gurus are not gonna tell you. I would like for you to sit down and lock in over the next 20 minutes because he's gonna give you the tactical, the tactical step-by-step -step of what this infrastructure actually looks like. He already shared with you know, how you need to think about the product and how you need to bring that to market, but now he's gonna give you the blocking and tackling of something that's generating hundreds of millions of views without a dime spent. Are you kidding me? I hope you love this shit. What what was some of the what sauce do you feel comfortable sharing? Obviously? Yeah, dude, I'm I'm about to share it all. So so listen, pay attention. You're gonna want to watch this video. To me, like there are three main pillars. And by the way, like you said, the caveat is that of an in intrinsically viral product. Yeah, this isn't yeah, gonna yeah. work like if you're like selling you know a suitcase or a pillow, right? Like this works because my product by itself like goes viral left and right. You know, I had a content creator write a tweet saying that like even a monkey could drive two million views for Tabs Chocolate. Yeah, 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 and he's not wrong. But with that being said. Like, like there are a lot of systems that I've masterminded in order to, to hit those kinds of numbers. You know, in the early days, we were kind of stuck into figuring out organic. And the reason being was, is that A, we're a sex product, B, we're in the supplement space. And so we had a very difficult time running paid ads. And so I was kind of forced to figure out like these alternative, um, you know, super unorthodox marketing channels that I've created. And I'll walk you through all of them. To me, like there are three main pillars. The first pillar is TikTok organic content creators. And no, I'm not talking about influencers. I'm not talking about people that have an owned audience. I'm talking about people that can create viral content, okay. right? They don't, have, they don't have a following. And so what I do is I hire these creators to in, in essence run and manage my brand account. So I will find pranksters, street interviewers, grandparents, a whole bunch of different kinds of creators that come from different backgrounds. I will pay them a fixed salary. Actually, it's usually a hybrid model, small cash retainer, and then upside commission. on the affiliate commission, right? So when they eat, I eat and vice versa. So they're making a new account. So they're making a new account. Okay. And they're making like a, an account on a variation of tabs. So I have accounts called tabs, tabs chocolate, tabs yep. chocolate co co, tabs chocolate USA, so on and so forth. I have hundreds of accounts. I have hundreds of creators. Okay. Uh, and each account is run independently by its own content creator. And in essence, I look at that as like a channel. I'm not trying to like give them scripts or like micromanage them. I'm trying to be like the whole mother news station, right? Where I got 800 creators, 800 different angles, and I don't know which one's gonna go viral, but I know that with enough scale, it's inevitably that one hits. Conceptually, it's similar to the Tate. 
Oh, thing. very. Yeah. Very. Yeah. It's 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 very similar to the tape. And I will say that I was doing it before him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I don't want to say like, I created the method and like tape copied no, me. No, but you understood. But, like you, but you, I understood you, it. Yeah. And the reason, be, it's it's actually like a, a pretty like simple, you know, it, it's simple logic. The reason why I scale horizontally is that if you look at the most successful TikTok accounts, they are incredibly niche, right? Like, for example, the Subway guy. Have you seen him on TikTok? Yeah. yeah Where yeah. he like, he films POVs, like making a Subway sandwich. Yep. And every single thumbnail is the same. Every single hook is the same. It's the same duration. It ends with the same, right? Like he has a formula and the TikTok algorithm understands his content, understands his ethos as a creator, knows that people enjoy it and they push it out, right? And so the problem that I see with a lot of creators is that like they, they have they have a style that works and then they try to do something else that doesn't fit them and their performance gets stifled. So for me, instead of bringing like 800 creators onto one account where the TikTok the algorithm doesn't know who to show it to, you know, there are too many cooks in the kitchen. I set up each creator with their own ind independent account and I let them cook. And it's, it's as simple as that. Like people credit me to being like some like TikTok mastermind. I don't, I've never made a TikTok video in my life. What I understand is systems. Yep. I understand like, you know, from a macro level, how do I pull on these strings in order to maximize success? You know, I'm, I found I found an account that worked and then I was like, okay, how do I do this a hundred times? It's genius. Right? How do I do this a thousand times? How do I scale this thing to the moon? And that's kind of what I've figured out. That's masterful. That's right. Masterful. Thank you, dude. So yeah, so TikTok organic horizontally scaling is kind of like my, my first pillar. Pillar number one. Exactly. And then what I do is I give all of that viral content a second life by reposting it at scale across other social media channels. Got so it. if it went viral on TikTok, it's very likely going to go viral again on Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, Pinterest idea pins, so on and so forth. So then I had this idea, okay, how do I syndicate this content at scale across all the other social media channels? And at first I had my VA make 15 YouTube accounts, 15 Instagram accounts, 15 Pinterest accounts, and we saw a little bit of movement and then they fucking banned and wiped all the accounts. No doubt, right? It's tied to the same IP. They can understand that people are trying yep. to algo hack, they're trying to get in the system. They're not here for that, it's spam, right? Performance gets stifled, accounts are gone. So okay, how do I do this at scale and how do I kind of like finesse? How do I get around the system? And so I had the idea to create a Discord with affiliates similar to the Andrew Tate model. And so I created like a, a make money online Discord, it started with five members. And today I have more than 2,200 affiliates. And when they join the Discord, they're walked through, hey, you're gonna create an Instagram account with you know some variation brand name of tabs. This is how you're gonna like make the bio. These are the pictures you're gonna post. And then you're gonna sign up and get, you know, a, a, um, you're gonna get a trackable coupon code and trackable link, UTM link and then you're basically going to post my most viral tiktoks on your instagram reels page and on your other short form pages that you set up which is tied to your email address not me your ip your, your ip cell phone, your yeah. cell phone and you're gonna rip you're gonna spend two minutes a day posting across three channels and you make money doing and you're gonna make money that discord has made me over $3 million in revenue. Holy shit. I've paid out over $100,000 to these affiliates. And these are 14-year-old kids. These are 16-year-old kids, 18-year-old kids. I have some kids that are making more money than their parents, posting once a day for two minutes. Two minutes a day. They're making more money than their parents. I have a wins channel where people are like, yo, holy fuck, sell, sell, sell. Yep. Oh my God, my video went viral and drove 8 million views and $20,000 in revenue. And, uh, you know, I get some motivated. And then I have some like little like, uh, you know, tactics in order to increase, I guess, retention of the Discord. So every day, if you posted a video, you react to a message. And then one of my people on my team um, basically copies that list, throws it on a wheel, spins the wheel and gives out free money to two people every day. Nice. This just keeps them like more motivated. Yeah. We have like invite tournaments where like the top three people that invite the most people get 50 bucks 100 bucks 200 bucks whatever right we've kind of gamified it and really created it and, and really transformed it into a community we have a gym channel where people are posting mirror selfies like it's like a family man um and i think like that's like a key like secret to the success right but you know the discord has been you know instrumental um and, and and monumental to 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 my success so that i would say like that falls into pillar number one is you know tiktok organic and then leveraging that content and blasting it across and syndicating it across you know thousands of other social media accounts across other platforms do, do you mind me asking how you keep that organized like from a back-end perspective yeah a lot of moving pieces yeah so a i use like an affiliate software shout out social snowball shout out my boy noah tucker and that handles all the custom utm links and the coupon codes and the tracking and the attribution and the payouts, seamless. Amazing, amazing software. I really recommend any e-commerce to use it. Then I have um, actually one of the Discord members who was one of the first five uh, people to join. He now runs the whole entire Discord operation. Nice. He's been there from day one. He's shadowed me from day one. He actually cares. He's invested. He believes in it. 
and he runs the whole entire show. Nice. Um, and then I have somebody from my team that kind of supervises, you know, manages the payouts, the financials, the tracking, oversees it. And so at this point, it's become its own little autonomous machine that prints money. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, okay, you got those two pillars. Any, any well, I would, I would call that pillar number one. Okay, that's, that's pillar number one. Pillar number two is memes. You, you all right, but sorry, let me let me refresh. Memes are life, bro. A few people understand it, but it's memes dude, eat the world. Dude, you know, as, as Kanye says, some make millions, others make memes. I do both. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, right? Uh, but meme, meme pages are an incredibly under-leveraged marketing channel. You need to have a good product for it to hit. But you got to understand, like, these accounts, have, you know, there are networks of these accounts that you can reach hundreds of millions of followers for pennies on the dollar. Instead of paying Facebook uh, a $40 CPM, you could, you could pay, you know, an 18-year-old kid a 50-cent CPM and reach the same amount of people, same quality of traffic, and print. If you know how to manipulate it and, and you have the right product and the right creative, et cetera. So I have uh, two meme page owners, uh, Philip and Kozak. One runs at Fuckology, which has 4 million followers. The other one runs at College Fessing, which has 5 million followers. They live in the meme world. They know every other meme page yeah, yeah, owner yeah. because like they're boys. Like they sleep on each other's couches when they were growing up. Like, you know, so they're super tapped into the community and they're able to get me deals or they're able to get me posted across the internet for pennies on the dollar because they're getting the homie rate. They're, they're not getting like wax, like a, like a traditional company would. Yeah. Um, and I give them like 20% of all the ad spend that they manage. I spend six figures a month on memes, swear to God. Instagram memes, Twitter memes, Snapchat memes. And I see like a three to five row ass on that, minimum. Six figures on memes. Right. I, don't, I don't know if we'll hear that again on this channel, but right. we should because right. it's fucking smart. Right. Interesting. Yeah, so that's pillar number two. And again, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I take my winning creatives and most viral pieces of content that crushed on TikTok. And right? distribute them. And I, I, I tweak it a little bit. I, I shrink it down, put it like on a white background and put a little meme caption on it. And then I just basically give it another life and, and put a little bit of paid spend behind it on these meme networks. And I just let that shit cook. A, I get the boost from the own distribution of the meme page. And then B, like, you know, it's going on reels. It's going on these short form platforms that have the algorithms. And oftentimes it'll get picked up because the content is so good. So I get to ride the boost and I get to ride because the content's so good. I'm off to the moon, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So that model has worked incredibly well for me. I would say that's pillar number two. And then pillar number three is influencers. And that's something that I haven't been able to crack quite yet. I'm still trying to like kind of find a blueprint that works. I spent a lot of money with a lot of different people and agencies and contractors, supposedly experts, and it's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And the reason why is because in order to work with influencers at scale, you need to cast such a wide net. The reality is, is that 90% of influencers will ghost you. They won't even respond to your message, your email, yeah. your text, or your DM. Of those that do respond, like 90% will want to rip you off and charge you an exorbitant rate that is unprofitable. And then of those that agree to the post, half of them just steal your product and ghost you, right? So like in order to like collaborate with one influencer, like I'd argue that you have to reach out to a thousand. And so to do that at scale becomes incredibly difficult, incredibly challenging, becomes an organizational mess. And so, you know, I've tried to automate the system with VA and you know using automations like Z zapier and warming up 12 different domains to send cold email like I, I I'm, I'm still kind of working and finessing but haven't been able to crack that and if, if you can hit me up hit me up on twitter at oliver underscore underscore b1 lots of yeah. upside there and yeah you haven't figured out that piece no i've yet. not figured that piece yeah. out so that's the micro influencer uh channel that i'm still working on and then b i'm also starting to now take some more riskier bats and gambles with bigger influencers i i've never been a fan of big influencers and the reason being is is that I feel like oftentimes you're paying more for their brand name than for their actual distribution. Yep. Like TikTok has democratized the ability to go viral. Yep. doesn't matter if you have 500 followers or 500,000. I'd rather throw a small bet on a tiny influencer and make amazing content with the goal of going viral and reaching millions than like paying some, you know, huge name like Charlie D'Amelio or David Dobrik like seven figure check and it might hit, might not hit, right? But what I will say is like now we're at the point where I'm, a, I'm able to take those bigger bets and kind of see, and, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So, you know, next month I'm going to be um, playing around with, you know, working with Mia Malkova is, is somebody that I'm working with, right? Like she's a famous porn star that has like 3 million followers on IG. Um, My wife's asking, I don't know who that is. But Cap, yeah. <laughs> Cap. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we got some like bigger influencers in the pipeline lined up that um, I'm excited to kind of spin uh, the dice or, or throw the dice and, and see what happens. I don't have high hopes and, you know, it is a lot of marketing spend, but my thought process is might as well test it out. Yeah, you got to take some bets. Right, exactly. Some so bets. we'll see where we go from there, but um, that's 
that's kind of basically like a comprehensive overview of like my, my marketing channels and strategies. Now, of course, um, I run Google ads. I have an amazing email SMS team that crushes for me. You know, there's some like foundational kind of things that, you know, I'm doing on the back end that I'd imagine every e-com, you know, merchant is right? Like with cross sales and upsells and conversion rate optimization and split testing pricing and new offers, et cetera. So, but for me, like that's kind of like my blueprint. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, that, that's like real, that's real sauce. That's, yeah. that's, that's the real blueprint of a $10 million to potentially that, that playbook, you crack the influencer piece, you keep doing what you're doing, keep blocking, tackling, stay in stock. Right. I genuinely think that's a roadmap to 50 mil, which we'll is see. like, I mean, I think you could do it. Right. But so, so on that note, we were talking a little bit about the internet as a whole yeah. and, uh, you know, some of the stuff out there, right? And, and uh, the different ideas that percolate YouTube, the social media market agency, drop shipping, you fall sure. into a lot of these. And um, yeah, and, and so I get asked all the time, like by kids, every time there's a new theme that went viral, social media marketing agency, drop shipping, right. I get people asking me about it. No code SaaS. Sure. Right? There's always these, sure, these new sure, things. Sure, sure, sure. So, Automated trucking. Yeah, yeah. What the it, hell is that? It's always a, <laughs> you know? a new pitch. Yeah. So what would your advice be as a real business operator to, you know, I'd say an 18 year old or, or yourself, you know, I mean, you were doing it at 14, which is incredible, but someone in your shoes at that time, if you could speak to that person before they went down the rabbit hole of what's hot and what's new, how would you advise them forward on a path of entrepreneurship right. and finding something that really moves the needle and creates a real business? Yeah, absolutely. I think that like, if you're hearing about it, it's too late. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Like, agree. Totally like, like if, 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 you know, no code SaaS is the new wave that's ripping right now, like it probably ripped two years ago and now like the market's saturated and it's fucked because like, if you're hearing about it, like you're the last person to know, like it's already traveled amongst our world. We've already heard about it a year ago. Yep. There are like 800 competitors. And so like, if you're a 16 year old kid and you're seeing some YouTube guru that only makes money from selling you a course, talk about it. Chances are it's wiped. It's GG. It's rap. You know, I, I had a saying that in, you know, there's that old saying, it's like those who can't do teach. Right. And, and in this new world, I really believe like if, if you launched a mastermind on all your DTC stuff, right. I would be interested. I would pay $10,000 to do that and learn directly from you and get your SMS plugins and, sure. and all the things. Sure, sure, sure. And so I believe in this new world, only those that actually do should teach. Like that's my, that's my thought process. And then it's good money. It's, it's money well spent. Right. You're not going to learn any right. of this shit in, you know, in college. Like if you need a degree, to do it, it's not going to make you wealthy. hundred percent. So yeah, I love it. Yeah, it. yeah. But you know, I guess my advice would be like, if you're like a younger kid, like all these gurus and all these entrepreneurs try to like shove down your throat that like, you need to start a business and you need to be your own boss. Like there is nothing wrong with working for people that are ahead of you and learn it. Because at the end of the day, like the money does not matter. $10,000, oh, you would have made $50,000. Oh, you would have made $100,000. Like at the end of the day, like that is chump change if you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, right? And so like the most valuable thing that you have on your side is time. You're young, you're inexperienced, you have a lot of time in front of you. And so my piece of advice would be, instead of chasing the dollar and the quick buck, instead of chasing this dream of entrepreneurship, learn as much as you can, as fast as you can. Real skills. Real skills. Like that kid in your Discord. Like sure. Yeah. Dude, I have no doubt that if he like sticks through it and, and, and keeps like shadowing me and learning from me, like he can start his own seven figure business in a couple years. Yeah. No doubt. You know, for me, like before tabs, you know, I worked on scores and scores of projects. A lot of them were very unsuccessful. And I worked for other people that were ahead of me as well. I mean, I got burned left and right and I made shit money. But guess what? The reason why I'm going to do over $10 million in revenue this year is because of all those experiences. Those were foundational for my success today. And it. so you can't skip that. You can't just make a million dollar business and, and stumble upon it. You need to fail. You need to like, you know, put in your work. You need to be, you know, a second in, a, a second in command before you could be the boss. You don't get to just like shortcut that. And anybody that is successful has put their time in, they have grinded their ass off and they deserve to be where they are. You know, I don't believe in like getting lucky. Like, like if you talk to any successful person, they have war stories. They have so much scar tissue because they've been ripped up and tossed and turned. They've been through the ringer and they've made it out. And that's why they're sitting right there. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so, so one more kind of off wall one. Um, and, and I think the audience will appreciate this. Maybe they won't. But so when you're, when you're going out, in, in Arizona, Scottsdale, Tempe, like what's like the, the pickup line look when you're explaining your, you know, your, your work to people, like, right. like how, how's that work for you and, yeah. and all that good stuff? 
You know, it's funny because I recently dropped out of school. I was studying business at the University of Michigan. Um, and I used to be really embarrassed about my work. You know, I'd be at a bar or whatever. And like one of my would say, ah, he sells sex chocolate. This is when I was just starting off. He sells sex chocolate. And the girl would look at me like I'm fucking crazy. Like I got like, you know, a second head on my on, my, on the other arm, right? Like what a fucking freak. What a weirdo. Like he sells sex. He sells, you know, but now I, I own that shit. Like fuck it. Yeah, dude. I sell yeah. sex chocolate on the internet. And, and you're I'm, buying the bar. And I'm, 20, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm 21 years old and I'm a fucking multimillionaire like whatever like and if you got a problem with that like that's fine um uh, it's cool but um yeah so i mean like now i guess like my pickup line i don't know i, I don't i don't really try that hard that's what it be so yeah. so hold, hold on, <laughs> last last one too there I see his boy smiling over there yeah bit. exactly i see a fucking laugh but how, wait, how, how'd the was it mia what was her name mia malkova malkova how, how did that are you like leading that that charge or like what's what's good there what's yeah she was in my idea no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> uh no one of my buddies um you know actually fill up um one of the one of the meme kids his, okay. his friend is like a manager for like only fan girls and you know whatever so he's got the connect and the relationship and so he's kind of like facilitating that whole deal got it yeah. got it yeah all of yeah. it man it's been a like genuinely like you fucking crush this i think the value you just provided like if the watch time isn't all the way through i lose all hope for the entire e-commerce world but i'm sure it will be because this is this is the sauce that people <laughs> yeah. need man. where where can people find you across the board yeah yeah absolutely you can find me on instagram and youtube at oliver brocado b-r-o-c-a-t-o his stuff will be linked it'll be linked in the bio right. here as well yeah Fire. And then I'm on Twitter at Oliver underscore underscore B1. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you fucked with it and uh, you're rocking with me, yeah, drop me a follow, drop me a like. I'm not a guru. I have nothing to sell you. Uh, I don't have I don't have some bullshit course. I don't have some bullshit discord. Like I'm just I'm just a kid that no, he, uh, he's the definition of of he is a guru and everyone else is not. Like this is the sauce and this is the this is the future. Being able to oh, like you opening up and doing this type of stuff, yeah. it creates more entrepreneurial innovation. So thank you for you doing that. Well, I hope so. I mean, like, dude, if I can like change one person's life like that's a w right absolutely um, and like what does it cost me like this is fucking awesome love chopping it up with you so yeah i mean all i ask is like yo drop me a follow drop me a like if, if you enjoyed the interview whatever send me a message um you know i invest a lot of time and money into my personal brand like mm -hmm. i got an editor i got a videographer you know like there's a lot of money and time that i'm allocating to this and like without a return right i'm not i'm not making a bunch of money off this in fact you know i don't make a single dollar off this but you know i do it to to network to meet cool people like yourself and you know hopefully to make an impact um so so if you're rocking with it, drop a follow. Oh, man. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Till next time. Cheers.